Active surveillance is a very controversial topic today. Uh, I like to point out that the chance of you having prostate cancer is basically your age. If you have a 12-core needle biopsy, regardless of your PSA or exam, your chance of having cancer found is about half your age. So if we understand that incidental, or some people like me prefer the term autopsy prostate cancer, is very common in our population, and that many times when we undergo prostate biopsies because our PSA is elevated because our prostate's big or inflamed, uh, or we have an abnormality in our prostate exam that may not even be from the cancer, we will find this autopsy, top price, autopsy type prostate cancer. It's estimated that about 50% of the men in America who are detected with prostate cancer will be overtreated if they undergo treatment. So now the question becomes, how do we choose those men who should be subjected to active surveillance instead of active treatment? The NCCN, to my knowledge, is the uh, first organization to recommend active surveillance for many men with prostate cancer. If you are found to have a low-risk prostate cancer as assigned by your PSA, your exam, and your Gleason grade, and your life expectancy is less than 10 years, the only recommendation should be active surveillance. The same holds true if you have very low risk prostate cancer, that's a subset of low risk that's even lower volume disease, and your life expectancy is less than 20 years. This is very personal for me because I'm 57 and the Social Security Administration says I'm gonna die 20 years from now. So if I'm found to have a very low risk prostate cancer, the only recommendation for me uh, as of next month will be active surveillance.